The mining companies tell us that mining coal is a part of our culture and heritage, but here in the Illawarra, we've got plans for a different future. We know that we'll always need water, we won't always need coal. As droughts become more severe and bushfires threaten our communities, the habitat for us and the living things around us is changing fast. In December 2020, the Russellville Coal Mine was granted permission to expand further into our water catchment. In May this year, construction is set to begin. Mining in the Sydney Illawarra water catchment connects us all. First Nations people are stopped from walking their own country while the mining companies take the coal from its belly. Neighbours of the mine breathe black dust as the nearby creeks turn black. Local people see the swamps and creeks drying out. Miners witness the damage they see at work as many are stood down with the price of coal globally collapsing. And young people, we think about our future. For us, our escarpment is one of our main creation dreamings here in Illawarra. If you look um, up to the north where Bald Hill is, and then you follow that as it wraps around and it moves sort of through the northern suburbs down to uh, Mount Kira, wraps back around to Mount Kembla, and then moves back over towards Macquarie Pass, and then down to where you've got they call Saddleback Mountain that moves down towards Climber Bends there. For us, we call that Warabinji Nandagari. And that's the red belly black snake dreaming, see? So this entire escarpment is connected and interconnected. Unfortunately, we weren't surprised when the Russellvale mine got approved. Very disappointed, frustrated, but not surprised. It made me angry, sad, and genuinely just distraught. It was a slap in the face to all the organisation and all of the outcry from the local community. It's the way the government tries to position it as being a stimulus for our economy. At the same time saying they're trying to reconcile and rectify their relationships with the Aborigine. They think we're silly fellas. It was hard to have faith in the IPC when it was restructured in like the mid-2000s on the basis of approving mining projects. I live near the Russellvale Colliery, so I will I'll be directly affected by the Russellvale mine expansion in a personal way. But the principal reason why I oppose this expansion is that it is going to damage the Greater Sydney water catchment. We're a group of just community members um, who get together and try to stop mining underneath our water catchment. This is the water catchment for, you know, five million people in Sydney, the Illawarra region. And people don't know it, but there's lots of mines. There's so many mines digging beneath our water catchment. Lock the Gate opposes Wollongong Coal's Russell Vale project, and we have done for many years for three reasons. One, they want to mine in a very sensitive drinking water catchment that's critically important for people in the Illawarra and Greater Sydney. Two, the project will produce a huge volume of greenhouse gas emissions at a time when the whole planet needs to drastically cut back on those greenhouse emissions. And the third reason we oppose this particular company trying to develop projects in our water catchment is that they're not fit and proper. They can't be trusted. They've got a terrible track record in Australia and so does their parent company overseas. So we're uh, standing in an upland swamp we can't show you the swamps inside the special areas. We're on the Warrenora Plateau. The vegetation is very similar. The thing about these swamps is that they hold water over long periods of time. So they're like a big sponge that releases water through a nick point down the bottom. And out that nick point, water might run year round. And that water is very important to animal communities that live in the swamp, but also around the swamp with underground mining you can break up this basin and it will start to leak. But the water will stop coming out the nick point, it will start going through the cracks down into the ground and that will disrupt the ecology. On Tuesday 2nd of March 2021, we witnessed a major pollution event at Red Bank Creek. So we're standing in Red Bank Creek, 
This is a reasonably steep valley and Red Bank Creek is a tributary that drains into the Nepean River via Stone Quarry Creek. So we're just outside of Picton near Thelmere and under our feet about four to five hundred metres below long wall coal mining has passed under um, backwards and forwards taking out about two two and a half metres of coal and the whole landscape afterwards drops that the sandstone has shattered and it's shattered here in quite a dramatic way has made this a non-flowing section of creek but water still flows down what happens it flows down into the cracks down into those cracks and fractures like the ones you can see around me there's lots of hairline fractures um, the creek itself doesn't flow but then it starts to come back up as it goes through these cracks from the subsidence it dissolves metals chews up oxygen and then it's hitting the surface and it's grabbing the oxygen from atmospheric air and that's why we're getting this um, precipitate falling, forming. So that's again oxides of metals mixed up with algae. I've never seen it look this bad though. Uh, my main concern with the proposal is actually about the dust. So as you all see there's big piles of dust, big piles of coal uh, waste which are located even at the moment with the mine not operating about 200 metres from our house and when the wind blows from that direction um, there's a lot of fine sticky black dust that comes and coats everything in the house and I've got a big concern about the impact that will have on my children over a long period of time. So this uh, mining company's actually had a long history of not doing anything about the dust and they're the ones who are responsible for managing that dust including monitoring it and telling us whether it's safe or not. It was 26% um, capacity and all of the water was beneath the banks so you could just see banks of like the dam for like ages before you could see any natural environment. It looked like kind of like Mars, like it looked so alien. Every day we're getting closer and closer to complete climate breakdown mm -hmm. and no matter how you put it, it's coal just doesn't work. Yeah. It's worked for a long time and there's just there's just no way that we can continue the way that we're continuing. You're now looking in a southerly direction from the dam wall into the areas where Illawarra Coal's application is uh, applicable. All of this area has been undermined previously. The cracks are bigger the second time around than what they were when the first seam was mined. I have seen hundreds of them cracks that open up to 1800 millimetres wide and you look down and they go for hundreds of metres and this is in a, a totally preserved restricted natural environment. And we're by the Landing Creek just below the Russell Vale Colliery. Um, it's raining and the water coming out of the Russell Vale Colliery is black. You can see it's black with coal fines, coal dust, um, something. But Russell Vale in particular has already collapsed three sacred sites that spread between Winoona and Russell Vale and even right back up to Broker's Nose. Like these things have occurred to the fact that we can't even get in and see where this has happened. Russell Vale Colliery is owned and operated by Wollongong Coal. The majority shareholder of Wollongong Coal is a holding company in Mauritius, which is in turn 100% owned by Jindal Steel and Power India. The auditors for Wollongong Coal have pointed out that liabilities exceed its assets by over $1 billion. And actually coal mining companies are self-regulating in the state of New South Wales. So Wollongong Coal is regulating its own operations at the colliery and in the, the catchment and reporting to the government. So this is the company, a company that's no longer even registered on the Australian Stock Exchange that the New South Wales government has approved to operate the colliery and to mine our water catchment. We run from Stamble Tops all the way south to Mount Kira, Mount Kembla. But one of the areas we love most 
to run is towards Broker's Nose, which is a magnificent lookout point. There's a fire trail that takes us there. We've noticed that there's a sign put up there by Wollongong Call that says no access. And we've asked Wollongong Call um, and explained about our situation. It's public land. Unfortunately, we got a, a blanket no. So we feel a sense of ownership. We feel a sense of custodianship for the land that we run through. And we really think that it's important that local people um, are able to provide a kind of public witness to what goes on in these wilderness areas that we're so lucky to live uh, within and, and next to. There is hope and people are still banding together and we're still taking action and we still have time. Like even though we don't have the uh, governmental processes to go through, that hasn't stopped us in the past. We'll do, uh, take actions however we need to, to stop this mine from going ahead. The fight is not over because we all think that actually this Greater Sydney water catchment should be off limits to mining. It's off limits to the public in order to protect the reservoirs and the catchment itself. So it should also be off limits to mining and it should be protected to the centre of the earth. So there's black fellas, we's in relationship with all things, like I said to you, you know. You kill them trees, you kill those animals and those birds and those reptiles and the life in the streams. You kill those habitats, you kill that landscape. You're killing all of us. You're killing our families. That's not the way in which we sustain and maintain. Stop mining in our water catchment!